Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to you. Grace to you. Peace to you. It is good for us to come together. I call attention to announcements. There's a lot of different things that are going on. Uh, there's a lot of transitions that are happening as well. The board is working very hard. And I would ask that uh, our board members that are present this morning, if you would stand for a moment, please. Our board members, please stand. I want you all to look around. Keep standing, keep standing. What I want to tell you as a congregation is that these good people have been working very hard. They've been asking really tough questions. They've been going through a process of visioning about our future, who we are, where we're going, and these are very uh, crucial conversations. Sometimes it has not been easy because different people have different visions about who we are and where we're going and what it is that the world is asking of us as people of faith and conscience. I want you to look at them. I want you to remember them, their faces, and I want you to go and I want you to talk to them as we are unrolling and we will be sharing with you different decisions that have been made as we move uh, forward. And so, uh, again, uh, all of this is uh, in the works, and uh, that information is coming to you. And of course, I will lift up, though, I will lift up, Liz Curry has been providing incredible leadership during the time of transition, and so I want to say thank you for that. Okay? All right. All right. Thank you very much, all of you, the board members. So. Well, one of the things that we are in transition about is our relationship to immigration ministries, and that will be one of the things we'll talk about as a board on Tuesday. And we have noted that uh, ICE is not bringing people here for, uh, in terms of bringing asylum seekers to us. Uh, there's different reasons for that, I won't get into it. But nonetheless, we are proactive in defining our role in relation to immigration ministries and immigration justice. So one of the things we're doing is we are providing uh, uh, some coordination and provision of volunteers and supplies. To that end, I'm going to ask Sharon if she will speak to that. Good morning. So Shadow Rock has received a request for assistance from Longview Community Church, which is located near 12th Street and Osborne. And they are providing some overnight hospitality to asylum seekers. And they reached out to Shadow Rock because of Shadow Rock's extensive experience in this department. And they are asking for winter clothes, they're asking for infant formula, Pedialyte, Gatorade, and snack supplies. So Shadow Rock will be taking up a donation, and we're asking that these items be brought to Shadow Rock on Wednesday morning between 9 and 12. And then Ken and I will be delivering them to Longview Community Church a little bit after noon on Wednesday. So um, later on today or sometime tomorrow, there will be a complete list of the items that are being requested on our website. And we would ask that you bring as many of these items as you can on Wednesday morning, and we'll make sure that we get them where they are needed. So thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll also be sending out uh, information and also a, a link on our website that will have a list of supplies so it will be uh, uh, even more precise. And so thank you for the announcement. And uh, anyone who would like to help, just let me know, and we'll be working together on that. So let me think. Is there any other announcements? Did I, have I missed any? Is there any? Is there, is there any? Go into the chapel and we're gonna get married. That's all I know. So, in the middle of the service, we are going, not now, but we are going to, uh, we're gonna get married. And so, uh, thank you for sharing that joy with us and we'll be doing that, all right. All right, 
I think that is it. Jean, will you call us to worship, please? Congratulations. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great, and he'll be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. During this moment of silence, you may read and reflect on the words that have been read, gaze at the candle, or simply enjoy a little peace and calm. Into the daily circle of our lives, when all seems well with us and with the world, when our yoke is easy and the burden light, you break in. And scatter our faces. Into the daily cycle of our lives, when we are comfortable and at our ease, when the fire is lit but eyes are closed, you break in. And challenge our dependency. You break in to our daily prayers, our humble hearts, and lay our souls bare, you break in. You break in. You break in when defenses are down, with an angel shout, or the quietest sound, you break in. You break in. And we change. And all things change. When you break in and the angels sing, we join Mary in saying, Let us pray. Spirit of life and love, 
ancient of days whose plan unfolds so slow it's hard for us to trust. But your plan is to bring history to fulfillment. It's a big plan. It's a big scheme. It's, it's bigger than our vision and our imaginations. But we trust in the last word being love and peace and justice. And so we sing about newborn kings in a democracy. <laughs> we are looking for certainty and a sure word and a loving and strong hand to help history to unfold. So hear our prayer, hear our hopes, know our dreams, and empower us to live faithfully. And as we move forward, may we hang on to each other and never leave anyone behind. For this time of prayer, for the hope that you pour out to the world, we give thanks. Amen. I want to just uh, point out one thing, bring our awareness to this. We'll be working more on this as we uh, go into the new year. And that is, appreciate those of you who have been very intentional about moving forward, especially in these front center pews. Uh, how many of you have seen uh, Shadow Rock on YouTube? How many have taken a look at that? Okay. How many, I hope you knew that we were on YouTube. I believe we have over 50 uh, services archived there on YouTube now. And uh, we'll be rolling that out in a more intentional way and advertising that as well. But when you look at the YouTube video, it, it, and these front pews are empty, it looks like I'm not, I'm not preaching to anybody. <laughs> so... Uh, those of you who have been intentional about it and have moved forward, I appreciate that. We all appreciate that. And so we want to make you mindful of that. And we are in this boat called Shadow Rock. And hopefully we are all rowing together in the same direction. And that means making some changes. Changes inside here. Changes inside here, which is probably the hardest part. And then changes also here. That means where we put our butts. And so moving forward like this is helpful. So thank you for that. So there was this day when all these people showed up in heaven and God comes out and goes, okay, here's what, by the way, this is a very sexist joke, okay? I'm just warning you. It's very, I'm just telling you. So God comes out and God says, okay, I want all the women, I want you to go over there with Gabriel and, and uh, he's going to get an orientation. Okay, and I want all you men, we're going to, you're going to line up in two lines. And I want all you men that were obedient to your wives to line up here. And all you men that in fact had your wives be obedient to you, like the Bible says, 
I want you to line up here. And they all line up and the women go off and everything. And for goodness sakes, the line with all the men being obedient to their wives was just, it was like 10 miles long. But the line where the wives were obedient to their husbands, there was only one man standing in that line. And God is like, what is going on? What is wrong with you men? Here you are, you're supposed to be head of your households, you're created in the image of a male God. I'm sorry, it's, it's, I'm, I, I, I'm, okay. it's a joke, okay? Go with me for just a second. On down the line, and why can't you be like this man here? What is wrong with you? Tell me, sir, what is your secret? And he says, I don't know. I'm just standing where my wife told me to. <laughs> it was awful. It was, it was awful. I, I know it was. I get it. I want to point out that in the bulletin that Obey, late 13th century from Old French, that be obedient, do one's duty, and from the Latin, obedere, obey, be subject, serve, it goes all the way back to literally meaning to give ear to listen, to perceive. That is what it is to obey. Now I know the word obedience leaves a bad taste like stale fruit cake in the mouths of most shadow rockers. That it smacks of the dynamics of dominance and submission. It conjures up images of abuse and misuse of power. A call for obedience has often been a call made by the oppressor to manipulate compliance from the oppressed. The imposition or, or coercion of obedience by an individual or an institution is wrong. And we've heard this kind of call for obedience in statements like, do not question the doctrines of the church. Who do you think you are? Just obey. Or, I'm sorry your husband abuses you, but the scriptures are clear, wives are to obey their husbands. Or, as a person of color, you have been discriminated against and part of a discrimination. And even though such treatment is wrong, and even though you are right to be angry, you should be patient for your time is coming, but the time is not now. <clears throat> it's wrong. For all these reasons, the call to obedience and the word obedience should be held suspect. However, as usual, I cannot leave well enough alone. And I do not want a shallow, shared understanding to let it lie. I do not want to let it go because there's an important spiritual insight in going deeper. And it was people with a deeper spirituality than my own that challenged and blessed me. This third Sunday of Advent is traditionally the Sunday set aside to remember Mary's story. The very basics of her story is she is a very young woman who is pregnant with a child. The meaning of her story is subject to a great deal of discussion. We have a guiding metaphor to help us and new people to understand who we are. It's the metaphor of the three campfires and the one table. How many of you know the metaphor of the three campfires and one table? Raise your hand. Okay, put your hand down. How many of you do not know it? Okay, you see those people who do not know it? You talk to them. 
Okay? The idea is that when you come to a clearing called Shadow Rock, you'll find three campfires. You'll find people at different places on their own spiritual journey in relationship to God, in relationship to the world. And the campfire of traditional theists will wonder at God's choice of Mary. Remember the people at the campfire? You can go to any one of those campfires and you'll find good company and you'll find people that you can sing songs with and share stories and warm your hands. Well, at the campfire of traditional theists, they will wonder at God's choice of Mary and wonder at Mary's acceptance, Mary's quiet joy, Mary's obedience. The third candle of Advent is known as the Mary candle, and it is often the pink candle as it represents Mary's joy at being chosen to bear the Son of God, who is the light of the world, to bring all people out of the darkness. Another campfire of Shadow Rock is the campfire of non-theists. Non-theists will wonder at the mystery of it all. How is it that the common human act of gestation and birth speaks of life and love's greater purposes to bring wholeness and healing? Non-theists look for the higher and deeper meanings of common human activity and are in awe of the way light shines through the cracks of broken humanity. Was Mary a real historical person? Maybe. But more importantly, how did Mary find peace and be an instrument of peace in such difficult circumstances? Where did she find the strength to be obedient? Our atheist sisters and brothers strip away the miraculous and the mythological elements of the story and they see the pain, fear, and a no-win situation for a young woman in a biased, prejudiced, and patriarchal society. They feel compassion and wonder about the injustice of such a story. If there is a God, then how is it that God would put this poor girl in such a predicament? It is difficult to understand and justify, especially in the age of hashtag me too. Why do religious people glorify this story and romanticize this poor girl's obedience? This story is being used to coerce women into compliance into a second-class status within the institution of the church, and in turn, a second-class status in Western society. A lot of diversity within our place, among our people, all of which we gain great insight and have great discussions among ourselves. We are enriched to be in each other's company. Feminist theologians have powerfully articulated a critique of the church's presentation of Mary as the icon of womanly obedience. Mary's response to the angel's announcement, thy will be done, is viewed as proof of Mary's unquestioning obedience, and it was used as a social directive for women to be obedient in general and specifically towards men. However, feminist theologians offer another viewpoint. I quote and paraphrase writer Petra Papesco to help me make a point. Mary of Nazareth was a girl who didn't live to see her son iconized as the official Messiah or herself being turned into the Immaculate Virgin. Nor was Mary, during her own life, a worshiper of icons, Jewish-born and Jewish-practicing. Mary of Nazareth would have rejected icons as graven images. Jesus himself, a Jewish man and possibly a rabbi, would have disapproved of icons too, including one based on his own image. 
you can see how much the lives of spiritual people can be transformed by the interests of the institution. In Mary's real life, the historical Mary was a rebel. And in the minds of women, Mary has always been an image of strength. An attentive rereading of the Gospels can establish with equal certainness that Mary was clever, strong-minded, a survivor, a leader, a woman capable to weather hardship, to hold on to her dignity in ambiguous and dangerous situations, pregnancy out of wedlock, to quote the most obvious, and to maneuver complex situations, including the announcement by the angel you are with child. She was a superwoman. Against the notion that superwomanhood is defined by kindness, sweetness, motherliness, gentleness, and other soft qualities only, we can claim that superwomanhood is resilient, unfrightened, hopeful, optimistic, independent-minded, and filled with healthy curiosity. All attributes which we find in the women of today in their most autonomous stances, in their willingness to do without men rather than be the annex of men, and in their need for motherhood, but not for the bonds of marriage unless that marriage is for equal partners. It seems to me it is time that we look at Mary, the non-submissive, the strong and daringly <laughs> questioning both of God, the scripture, the church's traditional presentation. Petra posits that within orthodoxy, there has always been a rebel group of women who always saw Mary as strong and as her own woman, despite thy will be done. Now, I want to dare to take this further. And it is dangerous as a man for me to do so. Yes, Mary is resilient, unfrightened, hopeful, optimistic, independent-minded, filled with healthy curiosity, and ready to challenge authority, especially unjust authority. I add to this list the attributes of obedience, I do not mean obedience as we have already outlined, for that would be stupid, confusing, and undermining my own message. I mean obedience as it means by its root meaning. Obedience is deep listening. Deep listening to the way life is. When you hear the way life is. You cannot act otherwise. We have the concept, we have this concept in our own covenant. Yes, shadow rockers, you make a vow to be obedient. We say we covenant one with another to be the sensitive and responsive part of human society which perceives and responds to God's newest thrust in the midst of history. Friends, perceiving and responding to God's newest thrust in the midst of history. This is deep listening to the way life is. And this is obedience. You're already doing it, even though you don't like it. All of us, regardless of the campfire we are visiting at this stage in our life, share this call for deep listening, to perceive and respond to the way life is in the most loving and life-giving way. This was Mary's obedience. And when we emulate this obedience, we also can light a candle, a candle of joy. 
Amen. This is the time in our service when we lift up the celebrations of our lives. If you have a birthday or an anniversary, you've been surprised by grace. I invite you to stand, let an usher come to you with a microphone, so that way we can all hear it and we all get to share it. We'll start on this side of the room and we will make our way across this way and we will share in celebrations. Here we go. All right. Good morning, everyone. I just want to celebrate that this Thursday, my kids will be coming from Japan with my two little grandbabies. And in two weeks, um, Pastor Ken will baptize our little Lucia, six months old. And I'm just so grateful for this place. Thank you, thank you. And keep them in your thoughts and prayers Thursday as they take that 20-hour trip. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bert. I'm Bert Ruby. Um, I have uh, two things to celebrate. Um, first of all, last week, for those of you who were not here, I said one of my sisters fell on the ice and sustained a concussion. Um, she is doing very well. She's making really good progress. We're grateful for that. And we're grateful for all the prayers and, and notes that you've been sending. I forwarded. I um, uh, paraphrased what you sent and sent them to her. It was very meaningful to her. If you want to know where she lives, she lives in Ontario, Canada. So that's cool. Then my second celebration is what I call dancing on the table stuff. <laughs> and people reminding me I'm too old to get on the table. That's <laughs> literally true. Never. But here's what happened this week. Our eldest granddaughter has been accepted at Brandeis University as a student next fall. That's in Waltham, Massachusetts. We're really grateful for that. Wonderful. Congratulations. All right. Annika. Yes, Annika Baker Adam and my husband, Rob Adam, sends his greetings. And the good news is he had an x-ray taken of his leg on Thursday, saw the doctor, and he's allowed to go walk on it for 50% of the time with the walker. So that's my celebration. Wonderful. And hopefully he can come home in January because the knee, why he went, cannot be done until April. Okay, all right. So I hope he doesn't fall and break the other leg. No, that's right. <laughs> yes, we do too. He's a strong man. He'll be fine. Linda. Yes, I'm Linda Merrill, and this week was quite an adventure. It started that, um, first of all, we didn't make it to church last Sunday because uh, the red-bearded, uh, red-suited bearded man and I were at the Carefree Festival, and I left my purse, so I didn't have my driver's license on Sunday to come to the second Sunday <coughs> in Advent, the first one we missed for a funeral. And on Tuesday, it was a little bit happier because I celebrated a birthday. I'd like to say, in my husband's way, that I'm 14, until my son reminds me, Mom, there's no plus between the two digits. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Wednesday after lunch bunch, my knee that I've had trouble with uh, six years ago, you might remember I had a staph infection in my knee, it decided that uh, it wasn't going to work anymore and I barely made it to my car and got home and uh, we borrowed a uh, wheelchair from the uh, medical supply closet and our dear friend Linda helped us so much by helping our uh, red-suited, bearded man make the second presentation at the preschool this week. Um, and again, came back to take him to his physical therapy. 
On Friday, I finally got in to see the ortho surgeon who told me that yes, I have inflammation in my knee, but I now have arthritis in my knee. And that he gave me some cortisone pills. He says, we're not doing an injection again. And so uh, in two weeks, I'll go back and uh, we may uh, look at doing surgery on my knee. But oh. I was able to stand and put weight on my leg last evening so I can now use a walker and not the wheelchair. So Wonderful. that I'm celebrating. <laughs> yes, all right. Very good, thank you. thank you. Karen. I am being sneaky this morning and celebrating um, without my daughter, because she's not here this morning. Um, Martha, my baby number last turns 13 on Friday. So woohoo, um, another teenager in the house. <laughs> Yay, all right. I wasn't going to do this, I'm Barb Otto, but seeing Margo and Becky are getting married today, it's also my birthday. Yes. <laughs> I'm 77. Happy birthday. Thank you. All right. Roy, Barb. Hi, I'm Roy Zab Zabrowski, and um, last week I celebrated uh, birthday uh, 72. And on Tuesday, I will be 72 also. What? Yeah. Happy birthday, my young wife. Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday. Very good. Dewey. Yes, Dewey Ray. Uh, we'd like to ask some prayers for uh, seven-year-old uh, grandson of a friend of ours. Yesterday was diagnosed with type 1 di diabetes. Mm. All right. Thank you for sharing so we could pray. Thank you. Gordon. I'm Gordon Schneider. Uh, we had a big day yesterday. Our our son Ryan finally got his first house, and he moved out yesterday. So. <laughs> All right, wonderful. Okay, June. I have two celebrations. Um, I'd like to uh, celebrate the life of Evelyn Govier. She was a longtime member of the church. She was involved in the older bowlers, which no longer exist. She did the pews for 28 years, and um, I've missed her these years that she's been in care. Um, the other celebration is I have nine people in my family that have birthdays this month. <laughs> and yesterday, my oldest great-grandson turned seven years old. Wonderful. Shoot. This is a very expensive month for you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and Christmas and birthdays, all right. Amy. Hi, my name is Amy Johnson, and I'm celebrating this week. My oldest is turning 17, and um, she is a Rotary Foreign Exchange student this year in Sicily, so she's not here, and I won't be able to celebrate with her, but I will be thinking of her this week. So. Yeah, absolutely. Very good. <laughs> Okay. Any other? Okay. Well, let's sing our celebration song and then let's get married. <laughs> each other like you like each other <laughs> all right we gather and surround Becky and Margot with the love and support of their Shadow Rock family their love for each other and your love for them bring us here today in order that we might share with them the celebration of one of life's most sacred promises the union of two people each unique in their own right but they decided to build one life together. This union was created by friendship, respect, times of trial and testing, and times of joy and beauty. Margot and Becky bring with them the dreams which drew them together. They bring the fullness of their hearts as a treasure to be shared, and they bring with them 
the ability to view the world, themselves, and each other with a sense of wonder and determination. Their love for each other is characterized by their commitment to build one life together. Let us pray. Giver of life and love, we give thanks for all the beauty in the world. We give thanks for all that binds us to one another, for all the common experiences which make us kin to each other, for the example of those who have taught us what love is, and for the courage and confidence we have come to know in finding it for ourselves. We give thanks for Becky and Margot, who have come to this moment as two and will leave as one, with one life ahead of them. May all that life brings them strengthen the bond they will declare here today. May they give comfort and joy, counsel and strength to each other. And may the home they share shed its peace on them and all who seek its shelter with them. Amen. Put your hands together, please. Becky, please repeat after me. I, Rebecca Allison, pledge to you. I, Rebecca Allison, pledge to you. A life of giving and hoping. A life of giving and hoping. A life of growing and loving. A life of growing and loving. I shall share with you. I shall share with you. Both my work and my play. Both my work and my play. I shall be with you. I shall be with you. In your tears and in your laughter. In your tears and in your laughter. Just I will just as I will bring my own sorrows. Just as I will bring my own sorrows. And my own joys to you. And my own joys to you. I accept you as my companion. I accept you as my companion. And pledge to you. Pledge to you. Honor, faith, and love. Honor, faith, and love. Margo, repeat after me, please. I, Margo, pledge to you, Becky. I, Margo, pledge to you, Becky. A life of giving and hoping. A life of giving and hoping. A life of growing and loving. A life of growing and loving. I shall share with you. I shall share with you. Both my work and my play. I shall share with you both my work and my play. I shall be with you. I shall be with you. In your tears and in your laughter. In your tears and in your laughter. Just as I will bring my own sorrows. Just as I will bring my own sorrows. And my own joys to you. And my own joys to you. I accept you as my companion. I accept you as my companion. And pledge to you. And pledge to you. Honor, faith, and love. Honor, faith, and love. May all that is noble, lovely, abide now and forever with you. May the love you have here declared blossom into that of fulfillment which only love can bring. With hearts full of joy, we make this our prayer for you. May all the people say amen. 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 Please face your Shadow Rock family. It is now my pleasure to present to you Becky and Margo, partners for life. You can kiss each other now. <laughs> We will now take up an offering, but it is not a wedding gift. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's for us. Uh, all right. So.
As an accepted, reconciled, and empowered people, let us give our offerings for the work of the ministry in this place and beyond. <coughs> Y'all come sing. Please meet us at the appointed place. <laughs> Go into this week held together by the love of God, clothed with the nature of Jesus, our companion, reinforced by the strength of the spirit of life and love. Amen. These are the times. We are the people. All of creation is blessed. May we love all and serve all. May God be with you. And also with you. Amen. Amen.